are beautiful. Hi. And a satya tween a hat. Oh my God. I had to represent. Yes, you did. So I had guys, to represent, my friend. Yeah. Oh, that is so stunning. Show it off. So guys, Satya Tweena, who's my business partner and our friend, she also makes these extraordinary hats. This is a Satya Tweena hat and it looks stunning on you. <laughs> oh. I, don't, I don't know how to wear it. She is so cool. You and her are so fashionable and so cool. I'm just like, oh shoot, I don't even know how to wear it. But mm, Satya is for sure. And then with her like big curly awesome hair. I know. Like, the hats look incredible. Um, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. You know, it's so funny. So Arlen just pulled up and now the windshield is all reflecting. So I'm like trying to see, I'm trying to see you here, but let me try and set this up a little bit more. Absolutely. So that I'm not getting this truck It's all about reflection. finding the light. Hi. I just had a big coffee and you know, sometimes you're just not quite ready for the coffee kick. And I'm just, ugh, I feel all jittery and happy and excited, but I feel like oh my goodness. a tiny screen that I need to like bring it back home a little bit. Girl, I had coffee, but I'm just nervous. You know, this is actually my first live that I've, that I've done on somebody else's live. I don't oh, think wow. I've ever done another live. I've done my own which yeah. I've said to my people that is just, it's not, it's not my wheelhouse. Ooh, it is not comfortable. There's nothing comfortable about doing lives for me. Not uh -huh. only because it's like this tiny, like you said, this tiny little, little screen, but you're like, I'm looking at you, but I'm kind of seeing myself here. It's weird. And it's, and there's other people out there and you're just like, and the comments and stuff. Somebody just said, so far, so good, Angie, and it's so true. You can't even tell that. <laughs> so but I love so you for saying it. And that's one of the things uh, that I love the most about you. You're just like, this is how I feel. This is how oh it is. Oh, my hurts. gosh. And it's so true. And honestly, you're saying a lot of the things that everyone else is feeling but don't dare to talk about. Oh. And that's why we love See, you I, so I have much. to talk about it because it, it has to get out. It has to get out. And I say too much. I'm constantly saying too much. And I wear my heart on my sleeve and I get in trouble a lot. Not from like people, but kind of from myself where I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that or yeah. whatever. But then I'm like, but oh, we need to say it. We need we to do. say it. We need to talk about it. We need to like, there's so much we need to say. Oh my gosh. As women, yes. especially. Because otherwise, where does it go, right? It's going well, all somewhere. It goes it just goes inside and yeah. it makes you sick and it makes you lonely and it makes you feel like you're the only one. Yeah. And it causes massive isolation, which we now know is an inflammatory, <laughs> causes inflammation and all kinds of disease. Right. And it's like, no, the more you talk about it, the more you say what you're feeling, the more it flows, the more we can all know that we're all a big mess and it's fine. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's chaos. It's crazy. There's nothing. We are this. five minutes into this live and we're just like, <laughs> you did it. We could stop right now. And that's all we all need to hear. That's amazing. So, uh, okay, let's start here. I'm going to uh, turn you up so I can hear you more because my kids are now outside. Sorry, go ahead. For those of you who don't know who I am, if you're here because you know Angie, I'm Emily Baldoni, co-founder of AMA. And my co-founder is Satya Twina, who also makes those incredible hats that Angie's wearing. Um, and many well, I hats. could have been wearing an AMA. This basically looks like one it of your designs. It does, actually, yes. Basically. Is, I have it in the closet because I'm not nursing yep. anymore. But. You have some gorgeous pictures wearing our cocoon that we just Yeah, love. it's incredible. That's the, the, that's the Sorry, uh, nursing cocoon. cover yes. that we make. Yes. And I'm sure all of you, most of you know Angie. But Angie is a mama of three a wife, triathlete, trainer, you were a model for God knows how many years. And I mean, I still am. You still am. Wow. I love it. <laughs> it doesn't ever stop. And, um, and you're Aren't we all, we're all Instagram models now. Exactly. Everyone's a model. Where, where's the line drawn? Yeah. Yeah. That's very, very true. Um, and you're an advocate for 
I don't even know if I'm saying this right before I would say emotional, physical and mental work. Um, oh, just being yeah. on that journey with yourself. Um, and I have to say, we, I mean, we met over a decade ago, which is crazy. We were living different lives. I feel like entirely I different lives. Ten years ago, then. girl. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. And I actually haven't spoken to you this way since then. No, I haven't seen you. I mean, I'm we've DM'd, we've like done yeah. the whole technology thing, but no, I haven't seen you. Texting and stuff. Um, well, it's about time. I and know. Then the thing is that for years we weren't in touch at all. And then um, I was in New Orleans, which is now, what is it, like two years ago. And it was having a, a hard time. My husband was directing a movie over there and it was just a lot of anxiety all around, lots of stuff happening. And I somehow stumbled upon your account on Instagram and just started weeping. I clicked on all the pictures and I got to read about what you had to say about loss, anxiety, depression, what we do to ourselves, um, how we beat ourselves up, but then also solutions, how we can begin to take care of ourselves and how we can learn from these experiences that we have and how we can live one life and then suddenly we find ourselves in the life that we always dreamt of or not. But it, you share your journey in such an amazing, inspiring, raw, authentic way that mm. first of all, I just wanna thank you so much again for putting your heart out there and your story and you are um, inspiring so many people out there. I know you have like 96% female followers, so it's probably- I think 98, I'm so proud of that. I think I'm 98% female <laughs> warriors amazing. that That's follow amazing. my journey. And yeah, I, I couldn't be more proud of that for sure. It's so beautiful what you do. And um, me and Satya, we knew we wanted to talk to you and do a live with you because of all of the things that we could talk about. But we landed on talking about the, the little journey between going from um, victim to warrior and changing the mentality. The little journey. The, the little journey, <laughs> the, the tiny little journey. Um, and sometimes that's a journey that you take in one day, right? We wake up feeling like we you are can, victims yeah. of all of the things and then we have to just rewire and reprogram and turn into warrior. And we'll talk more about what that what that means and of course that's extra heightened right now because we're all living in a crazy time and in a season that we've never been in before that there is no manual on how to handle it especially not mentally mm -hmm. um but i feel like there wasn't a there wasn't a manual for mental health before this <laughs> no there wasn't that is that is very very true and i don't know if there ever ever will be one well, with more conversation, I think there, there yeah. will be. I think we're having, we're starting a manual now. You know, right. I think the more, the more conversation we have about it, the, the more is written um, right. and the more people talk about it and the more people can help each other because that's really what it's all about. There's no, there's no manual. It's just what we all go through and how we all go through it together. Right. I think we're, right, we're writing it right now. Yeah. Not you and me. I mean, I'm not saying, oh, we're these, like, this is the <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, but as by opening up the yeah. conversation, other mm -hmm. people who are watching will then have a conversation with someone else as well and maybe not feel right. as alone. And that's, that's how you start healing. Yeah. You know? So I would love to hear um, a little bit about your, your story and some of the things that you share about on, on Instagram and also on your website, which I looked at the other day and it made me cry again. Um, what, just share whatever you feel comfortable sharing right now about your story and um, what brought you to where you are today that makes you so passionate about mental health and emotional health and physical health? What got you here? Well, it's all connected. Um... I, I didn't know that for years growing up, you know, I, I separated everything and didn't think that, I, I thought that my thoughts were their own thing um, and that they didn't affect my body. And I thought my body was its own thing and, and that nothing connected, uh, which now in the last few years, not only with science, are we proving that with the brain gut connection and uh, 
but we're finding that like everything from the mouth, from what you put into your mouth affects your gut because it's all, it's one big tube, right? It starts from your mouth. So whatever you're putting into your mouth affects your gut, which affects your brain. Um, and your thoughts, your thoughts aren't just floaty things out there that don't affect anything. They have chemical reactions that affect you at a cellular level. So when someone says, oh, just think positive, well, what, what does that mean? You know, you have to break it down to what are you thinking, but you're also, there's, there's different things that you're, you're thinking something, there's a thought, but then there's also an emotion, and then you're thinking about what you're thinking. So we all have like different voices in our head, <laughs> which yeah. makes everyone crazy. Yes. But I think it was, was it Brene Brown? Uh, I forget who it was, who, who first introduced me to the idea of, of you have a thought, but then you also think of what your thought was. So you have this, you have a mind and a brain, and those are different things. They're, oh, they're not the same. Um, I can send you the book after, because I have it actually right behind me. Yeah. So that for me, first of all, that was probably five, six years ago where I was like, oh, I'm not my thoughts. They're like, that's not me. It's actually a whole separate thing. So my story in a nutshell, because I don't want to take up like an hour long um, thing on just you know, who I am and what I've been through. I'm writing a book actually on it. I'm, I'm, I'm done my first draft. I now just have to edit it and it's going to be available early next year. That's huge. Uh, but the book basically is answering this question because mm. um, I get so many DMs asking what I've been through, how I've been through it and where I am now. So I had to write a book on it because you can't just DM these answers. Course, yeah. You know? They're these dark, deep, really, really heavy questions of how did you, what was the first step? How did you get how did you become a warrior from being a victim your whole life mm -hmm. or feeling like you were a victim your whole life? So anyway, I'm writing a book on it and that's, that's going to be great. <laughs> but to answer your question, <laughs> wow, speaking of like coffee and chaos, to answer your question, I, the first time that I can remember feeling like a victim and actually identifying myself with that was when my father died. He died when I was 11. And so you can go down this whole psychology Freudian path of, you know, being around that puberty age and then mm -hmm. your father dying and kind of what that does to your yeah. psyche. And I don't know any of that. All I know is what I, what I felt. Um, I say that a lot on my Instagram, not as a disclaimer, but I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. Uh, yeah. I'm not in the medical profession. I, I feel what I feel. I go through my experiences and that's what I share. So I'm certainly not telling anyone else to do what I do. I just have a platform to share. And I think mm -hmm. that's really important to share our own experiences. Mm -hmm. So anyway, my dad died when I was 11. And I remember um, looking out the window as an 11 year old girl. I had like this little bay window and just in my own, however I was processing it in my own grief, I would sit in the window and I would just watch, we lived kind of on this lake, on this pond, and I would just watch couples and people just walking by this lake. And I remember feeling sorry for myself and liking that feeling mm. in a weird way. But I, I liked um, the darkness. I liked like the, the heaviness that I felt of feeling sorry for myself because I almost felt like that was now uh, who I could identify as yeah. and that was my first you know remembrance of that and then of course there's like hundreds of examples after that but they all basically these examples and these experiences that I had throughout my life after that all um helped to build that victim mentality and helped to build up that safety of that character and the biggest thing now that I can say that it did is it allowed me to not take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I would miss school because um, I was grieving and that's all, it's all fair. I definitely was grieving, but when I look back, the excuses that I would make for grief or the excuses that I would make um, for being a victim, it was all just not wanting to take responsibility. Right. And this, I mean, I'm talking as a small child, you know, that's very different than being an adult and mm -hmm. not taking responsibility, but it stems from something, right? Mm -hmm. you, 
you asked me before what what the why was behind that if you go to kind of the root that's like that's the root of what i feel like started my victim mentality mm -hmm. and so from there you know fast fast forward through modeling through traveling through um living in new york coming to la getting a, a separation a divorce and all of these things in my story just kept on validating my victimhood mm -hmm. and probably one of the first time and i just lived as a victim i kind of lived uh small i would say because because of the fear of being bigger and i know there's that whole saying of like we are acting small and i never know if it's nelson mandela or who was the first one yeah <laughs> yes okay I thank you i knew you would know <laughs> Um, I, I acted small because I felt safe and then I wouldn't have to fail. So the yeah. victim goes to the whole failure thing, failure of success sure. and all of that. So mm -hmm. through my entire modeling career, I never really wanted to give it 100% because I always compared myself and the comparison in my career crippled me instead of made me propel. Mm -hmm. So because I felt like a victim, it was, I had more negative attributes to the comparison rather than the positive like comparison can be very very good for you because it makes you step up right um but i never had that coaching voice in my head i had my own negative voices in my head that made me smaller so everything that i did i acted small because i never wanted to be big i never wanted to put myself out there so the first time that i can remember someone calling me out on being a victim, which I never even knew about, was um, a friend of mine who you know as well, Kathy. Um, she was a friend, a therapist, um, and I had gone over to my ex-husband's apartment because we shared uh, we share our firstborn child. I had gone over there to help him set up the room or whatever. But anyway, I ended up falling asleep on the couch. And I fell asleep, or I woke up in the middle of the night freezing cold i had somehow fallen asleep like this so my neck was jacked i was freezing cold so i woke up shivering and it was dark everyone was asleep in the apartment and i remember leaving and bawling my eyes out but also being so angry so angry that he wouldn't put a blanket on me that he wouldn't think to like help me lie down or get me a pillow or whatever and i was really angry about that and i spent a few days being quite angry and then Kathy called me and she's like, hey, we had an appointment or whatever. I forget what it was. But I remember explaining to her how angry I was that I had fallen asleep on the couch and that he didn't put a blanket on me or that he didn't like shift me around or whatever. And she just said it was like mind blowing. She said, well, did you ask him to? And I was like, no, mm -mm. I just assumed that he would like. And I think the, I assumed because that's something that I would do if someone were to fall asleep, like I would put as a mothering kind of personality, mm -hmm. I would put a blanket on them or I would give them a pillow. I, I would gently wake them up and say, hey, do you want to go to the bed? Like, will you be more comfortable in the bed? But he didn't for whatever reason. And um, and I just thought, oh, I'm still mad, though. <laughs> I'm still angry. And she said, well, you can't you. I don't know if she said this, but. I learned that I can't be angry because of someone else's actions. I can't, I can't be angry at them when I didn't ask them to do something. Like I should have taken responsibility mm. as an adult. And mm -hmm. you can tell when you're getting tired. And if I didn't want to fall asleep alone on the couch, you know, and, and be freezing cold, I should have done something about it and taken right. responsibility. So that was kind of the first thing that clicked for me of being like, okay. I need to be an adult here, <laughs> learn to be an adult and learn to take responsibility. And I've been learning ever since this was probably 10 years ago. And I've been learning because I keep on falling into the pattern of being a victim. But now that I'm more aware of it, I see what I do. And then I'm able to use the tools that I've gained to say, no, I need to step out of that. I need to take action. I need to take responsibility for myself. And with that, like within 10 years, I know you said sometimes it takes a day. <laughs> me, it took me 10 years. <laughs> um, I'm able to, I'm able to 
to connect more to a warrior. Um, I don't know if it's a character or person. I, I connect more to being a warrior than I do to being a victim only because I've seen that a victim gets you nowhere. Feeling mm -hmm. sorry for yourself gets you nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there's a saying, misery loves company, but I've actually never seen that. I've mm -hmm. seen quite the opposite. I've seen that misery is isolating and misery yeah. or being a victim um, is extremely lonely and mm -hmm. you don't go anywhere in life because you're just completely crippled by right. your own misery and not taking responsibility. Yeah. And for me, it took a lot of baby steps over a lot of years. Triathlon yeah. was a huge tool that I had um, in training mentally and physically, which they're both connected. You can't train your mind without having a physical um, reaction and you right. can't train physically without your mind, as you know, from doing the ice baths as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, the two are, are beautifully connected. Um, and so now I definitely, you know, it's not like I'm a warrior every day, all day long. Certainly not. <laughs> there are weeks where I'm like nowhere near being a warrior, right. but I know what that feels like and I know what it felt like and I know how to get there, even though, you know, there's, there's seasons of being kinder to yourself, mm -hmm. um, not in being a victim, but being kind to yourself and mm -hmm. taking it slower or, you know, not being as productive or resting or whatever, where we're not out there all day long being like, go, 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 warrior, warrior. Right. Says. Yeah. And we can talk so. a little bit more about that, that of course, warrior does not mean that you're just like a constant badass, to all, always crushing life and, and having the best, that's not even, that's not you a reality. Can't be. No, we, I, we, I it's impossible. It yeah. Um, uh, that was a, that I had a question, answer. but it just it's just a great question. <laughs> I had a really great follow-up question, but it just escaped me. Um, it, I mean, you, oh, you touched on so many great things. So, like, where, where, where do you begin? I just think it's. I think that's. You said something really important, though. That that it's almost like you have to live with your victimhood for a while and just notice when it kicks in and how bad it feels, and that it doesn't yield any fruit. But what you just said, loneliness misery without company, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, um, to then, yeah, for me, it's point, a, yeah, it's a, it's a mindset right. for me, you know, it's, it's the words in my head. It's the, it's the script that I tell myself it's, you know, even, okay. Current example is getting ready for this live with you. Um, Arlen was gone all morning. And so I was making food and getting the kids. And then I was like, Oh my gosh, yeah, I need to get my, I need to curl my hair. I want to do my thing. And then I saw you uh, post about the thing and like your eyes and your makeup and you, you look so beautiful. And I was like, we do oh, crap. I gotta get yeah. myself together. And I still spit up all over my shirts and I'm like cleaning a diaper and making sure this is over here. And literally once Oliver took the kids for a walk and I went in and I started doing my makeup, I still had those voices in my head. Like, because now I'm much more aware of my thoughts and yeah. how insanely powerful they are. Yeah. I literally looked at myself in the mirror and like a crazy person, I was like, stop, stop. Mm. Be kind to yourself. You're the best you can. Yeah. And so you show up on a live without perfect makeup or like with your hair all crazy. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. What is the worst that's going to happen? But I had to make I, I had to make a full mental stop mm -hmm. in my victimhood of oh poor me I don't have any help oh poor me I'm trying to do this live I'm trying to do this business I'm trying to do all this stuff and help all these people and uh, uh, look look at my place it's a mess where it's like oh my goodness mm -hmm. stop <laughs> yeah and choose to be grateful choose to. I hate saying being positive because I don't think positive is being the answer, but I, I think choosing more positive words is the answer or more, more positive or grateful um, reciting certain things in your, in your brain mm -hmm. makes a huge change instead of feeling low or feeling victim or feeling poor me. 
Mm -hmm. It's what am I grateful for? What is this opportunity? And who cares if everything's a mess because it's life and it's beautiful and it's amazing. And I'm sure the however many people are, are watching this live, I'm sure they're not sitting there in pristine homes with everything perfect, with their hair and makeup all done watching this live. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I would much rather be a mess, but, yeah. but have that positive... Mm -hmm trying to think of like a different word other than positive but have like a powerful um a powerful grateful thought rather than a poor me woe is me thought right because it literally changes yeah it changes your cellular makeup like the whole full-on documented true science behind talking to a plant and saying nice things to a plant and how it flourishes rather than hating on it or like water. If you look at water, the cellular structure of water, you can literally under yeah. a microscope, see it change the as you're change. speaking to it because yeah. of the energy. So it's if you're real speaking stuff. to yourself, yeah it's, yeah, it's something that I never looked into years ago. But once you right. know, and once you actually research the science behind who we are as energetic beings and as mm. cellular living water, incredible magnetic beings, you know that what you're saying to yourself will impact you. And it yeah. literally, you can literally think of your cells like shriveling up. If you look at yourself in the mirror and be like, Ugh. Mm. like, you know, I'm whatever you say to yourself, when you look at yourself in the mirror, your body will react and you will literally your little cells will like become little victims mm -hmm. and just feel sorry for themselves and feel bad and feel small. Right. Rather than you have the power, no one else, you know, someone else can tell you look beautiful and you're like, Oh, great. Thanks. And all of us, you know, you flourish for like two seconds, but then the voices in your head, do I sound, do I sound crazy? Yet? <laughs> so much more powerful. No, it all makes perfect sense. And again, I'm so happy that you're, that you're also, um, that you were looking for a different word than, than positive, even though positive is, is a great word and it's good to be positive, but it's, that's something that I personally have struggled with. Um, affirmations, like writing stuff on my mirror, never worked for me because mm -hmm. it just, it was, it felt like fluffy stuff. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, if I feel really shitty about myself, um, reading those things saying you are beautiful you are powerful it was just like just like bounce off me mm -hmm. um and the importance of like that that self-love can just look like you holding yourself or me holding myself in that moment and not trying to change the things that i feel but like you said change the ways that i talk about myself change the ways in which i hold myself um which is something that i have to do a lot because what happens in me is that if I don't feel good and if I judge myself and I become aware of it, then I begin beating myself up about being self judgmental. It's like layer upon layer. Mm -hmm. and it it's a, so a terrible cycle. Yeah. And it is a terrible cycle. So sometimes that just means <sighs> I'm feeling all of these things. I'm under pressure. I'm overwhelmed. I'm feeling it all. I'm allowed to feel it all. I'm here. I'm showing up for myself. I'm going to hold myself right here. And I'm doing the best that I can. Um, so what I love about what you said is you, without saying it, you went to the why. You mm. went to the root of it. So the reason why I don't like affirmations and why I don't like sticky notes and why I used to not like happy people mm. or smiley people is because I, I thought it was fake. And I yeah. thought there, there wasn't any depth. And oh, and again, in my victim mentality of, oh, easy for you to say, don't worry, mm -hmm. be happy or be positive because you've never gone through anything in your mm -hmm. life. You know what I've gone through? Yeah. Do you know? Right. <laughs> and like feeling safe and feeling powerful in all of these things that I've been through, death, divorce, depression, all this stuff. Do you even know? Mm -hmm. Where if you, <laughs> so again, it, it just, it felt shallow until I realized that actually the most powerful thing that you can do is when you're going through something, but still you choose to smile. Mm -hmm. And I cry all the time. Every single day I cry. But like you said, if you're looking at yourself in the mirror, 
and you're feeling a certain thing. And if you can pinpoint it and you can, you can voice it and say, gosh, I look like crap. Oh, okay, it's because I'm tired. It's because I didn't sleep very good. It's because I'm feeling anxious about this. It's because, and you can kind of go to the root of why, mm -hmm. then you can be kind to yourself and say, yeah, I didn't have a very good sleep or, oh my goodness, look at the calendar and I'm getting my period in a few days and I'm totally PMSing and it's a full moon and this has come up. But as soon as you can voice those things, yeah, it becomes your why, then you can be gentle with yourself. You can literally ball hysterically if you have to mm -hmm. but because you know why you're crying and sometimes we don't know why but most of the time you and can't that's okay kind too. Of, yeah and that's fine but yeah. as, as long as you cry let it out move 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 and then that brings you to the depth of being able to feel another emotion so you go to the depth and like mm. ball hysterically punch your pillow do whatever you have to scream yell but get that out so that you make room for another emotion, which can be just as deep, which is happiness, gratefulness, fulfillment. And then you can move through these things that allow you to feel more powerful and take care of yourself, which is hydration, nutrition, right. movement, fresh air, sunshine, all these things that we know are healing and powerful and that create a sense of more positivity. <laughs> mm -hmm in your brain and in your mindset because you've moved through the other stuff and now you right. can make a more powerful choice in how you feel. Right. And because you can choose you how you feel. Show up. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. choose how you feel instead of allowing your feelings to choose who you are. Wow. There's a, a big shift in that. Yeah. So um, let's see, I wonder if I should read this question now yes actually I oh, we have some questions <laughs> we have some questions yeah now i have more questions um i don't know how i'm gonna fit all of this in um but the, we had a we had a question from from um a woman it, and it's interesting because she really does um she li she's living with chronic illnesses mm -hmm. um so she she technically is a victim of something of like mm -hmm. her current circumstances and she said Dealing with constant back and forth battle of victim to warrior when it comes to living with chronic illnesses. I can't help but wonder if there, were, if there will ever be one more superior to the other. Any tips, words of wisdom for overcoming the days when it feels more victim than warrior? Um, and I'm sure this will relate to everybody. When we have one of those days, what are some things that we can do to hold space for the for the victimhood or the rather the, the the harder feelings the darker feelings that we are experiencing and also maybe shift that into um more of a sense of a warrior mentality this i can mentality mm -hmm. well listen i mean you know i wish i was like a deepak chopra or, a, or an oprah or someone just mind blowing advice right now. You are but, Angie Fletcher. Yeah. <laughs> That's more than good enough. All, all I can share <laughs> is my experience. And first I deal a lot with people with chronic illness. Mm. Um, and people who are constantly beating themselves up about not being in a different place. Yeah. And I've been through and that's why I talk about how long it's taken me to get to where I am. And it's not that I've gone, it's not that I've arrived anywhere. Mm -hmm. I've arrived somewhere, you know, like we're always going somewhere, but I certainly haven't arrived at the, this is, I'm a warrior now and there's no turning back. I don't mm -hmm. believe in that because Arlen could get hit by a truck tomorrow and die. And then all of a sudden I'm on another journey. Right. Um, so for someone, for someone who's in bed, and someone who's dealing with chronic pain. It's, it's not about how do you change in that moment to become more of a warrior. It's mm -hmm. realizing where you are at the season that you're in and doing what you can in the season that you're in. So sometimes for months, all the warrior mentality would consist of is pain management. So it's not about you know, how am I going to be able to do that triathlon? How am I going to be able to do that thing? It's like, okay, how am I going to rest in this moment and manage my pain so that I can get up and go to the bathroom? Mm. 
and taking those small, those small steps of, of not rushing because a warrior doesn't rush. A warrior mm -hmm. doesn't try to be somewhere where they're not. Oh God, I love that so much. They are in the season, even though it hurts like hell, like, yeah, this isn't chronic, this isn't chronic illness, but this is something that I, cause I've actually, I've dealt with chronic pain, but not as an illness. Um, but if I go to the season after my mom died, this was um, five, four years ago, she died, I got pregnant right away. Mm -hmm. And so there was that, that full on season where I was in bed, I was nauseous, I was completely grief stricken. And in that season, it, it was months, it was probably six months where I just was like an absolute shell of myself. Um, and that was not a season or a time for me to be what other people might see as a warrior, um, because there's different versions of being a warrior. For right. me, being a warrior was being in bed, taking care of myself, um, and just capturing my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And being in that place, knowing that I've been in other places before, and I will be in other places again, but right now is not that season. Right now is a season to, to manage what I can manage. And if it's chronic pain, manage what you can, figure out why you're in chronic pain um, and try and get to the root of that would be my suggestion on how to be a warrior is not just sit in your pain. Oh, actually, this is a, a huge example. So speaking of being a victim and, and my pain, I used to have, uh, I used to have major cramps around my period and they would last for a week and I would be bedridden. So I, I wouldn't go to school wow. and, uh, and I, would use, I, I would use every single excuse just to lay in the fetal position and, and not move. So when I first uh, reunited with Arland, we were doing triathlons and training and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wouldn't train. When I got my period, I would lay in bed, I would lay in the fetal position, I would take Ollie to school, you know, come back, lay in bed again. And uh, Arlen would be like, have you ever, you know, dealt with, with your pain? Have you ever thought of like how to relieve your pain? And I was like, yeah, Advil, it's called liquid gels. And I just, I numb the pain and I know yeah. it'll go away and boom. And he challenged me in a very kind and gentle way to, to figure out more of the root of the pain. Mm -hmm. And this might sound so silly to someone who literally has like debilitating pain. And this was just period pain, but it was real for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was debilitating for me. So again, we can't really compare a broken toe to a broken arm, but still, um, I'm not trying to make light of it, but it was very, very real for me. And so I had to figure out over months and years, I had to figure out where the pain was coming from, why it was there, and then have tools on what I could do to not overcome the pain, but to actually move through it. So that for me was uh, nutrition. It was, you know, dealing with inflammation. It was also uh, doing ice baths. <laughs> it was doing a lot of different things and also um, doing things that I thought I couldn't do, but that I, I figured out that I could do and mentally it was holding me back. And my story was holding me back because our minds are very, very powerful mm -hmm. and they show up in physical ailments. Sure. Yeah. So when you can get through things that you didn't think that you could do before, uh, you build pillars of strength and pillars of, oh my goodness, I did that. So now I, I can do this, like having a baby with no drugs. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I did that. And that became a pillar Mm -hmm. of, wow, I'm actually more powerful than I, than I think I am, which we right. are. So doing little things, having someone that can challenge you and hold your hand and guide you through something that you think you never could have done before, but you do it, mm -hmm. it kind of gives you a different sense of what you can do, even in a season where you think that you can't, but you know that you will one day get there. Does mm -hmm. any of that make sense? All of it makes sense. <laughs> I'm just like, 
<laughs> marinating in it and people are sending hearts all the time by the way i did shut off the comments guys i saw that yeah thank yeah you, you can leave questions in the question box but i just want to be able to see your face angie and i'm but i'm seeing the hearts just bubble here so i, I do think mm -hmm. it's making sense to everyone um uh, i love what you said about capture your thoughts that's very often how i look at it that i have I have to kind of stand guard at my mind's door is what I say. Sometimes Absolutely. I just have to actively stand guard yep. at my mind's door to make sure that I capture the thoughts, capture the thinking that then turns into behavior and action. Um, it, it's such an important thing. And it's, it's, and it's, it's, a daily, it's, a it's a daily thing. It's it is a, a daily, daily thing. thing. It's not something, like I said, about being a warrior too. It's not something that you ever arrive at. No. Because the beautiful thing about life is it's constantly changing. Right. So, you know, as a victim, you always repeat this story of, mm -hmm. oh, this happened to me. And then this happened to me. And then guess what? Something's going to happen to you again because it mm. always does for sure but then that reiterates your story and validates your oh this is happening to me but right. with a shift with a warrior mind shift something happens to you it's like that meme that is you know someone has all these books um on their head and they're just like crawling around it says fail on all of these books it just says mm. fail and they're just like walking like this and the next one, um, or like side by side, the next one has the exact same books that say fail, but he's laid them out as a ladder. Oh, and he's, he's climbing so those good. things. It's literally victim to warrior mentality. Yeah. Where it's like you make it you a can ladder. Use, yeah, you can use what's happened to you. Mm. Classic example, my mom who got cancer, um, she never asked why. Why is this happening to me? She mm. always said, what can I do with what's happening to me or what's mm. happening for me? You know, we've all heard that yeah. as well. It doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Right. That's victim to warrior mentality. That's wow. a mind shift. So that's, I mean, that's what I love. And I love talking to you about it because you know about the ice baths. That's what I love yeah. about the ice baths is because every day is different. Mm -hmm. So these little affirmation stickers do nothing for me because it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you are beautiful. Great. I need something a little deeper than that. Right. For sure. So for me, I don't go off into this serene meditation place where I can just be alone and peaceful and just really gather myself. Cause that's not mm -hmm. my reality. My mm -hmm. reality is chaos. It's mm -hmm. small kids. It's a husband at home. It's a teenager. It's waking up and like, never having my own time. And right. I need to feel, I need to be able to gain a warrior mindset through the chaos on mm -hmm. a daily basis because everything's changing. So that's why when I plunge, mm -hmm. every single day is different. Every single plunge is different mm -hmm. because every single day is different. Yeah. And that's the whole victim to warrior thing too. It's like, you can choose to stay a victim for the rest of your life because something will always happen to you always, mm -hmm. but it's your choice on how you deal with that because good things and bad things happen to everyone across the board. Yeah. It's never a why me, mm -hmm. because if you really want to compare yourself to why me, you could compare yourself to the refugee Mm -hmm. off in some whatever country whose mother and father have just been shot and raped in mm -hmm. front of them. And then now they have nothing but, mm -hmm. you know, bare feet and they're walking. Like we can always compare ourselves. Yep. If you're going to compare yourself up. You have to compare yourself down. Yeah. And that's where the victim to warrior shift happens again, because something so will true. always happen to you. Life is constantly changing. There's always hope for something unbelievable that you could never have imagined like me getting married again and having children mm -hmm. never in a million years could i have imagined that when i was laying in the fetal position smoking a pack of cigarettes a day yeah and like taking xanax like their tic tacs never would i have imagined this to happen mm -hmm. but life happens and it's up to you to kind of shift your mindset to slowly but surely take what's happening and use it use it for the good mm -hmm. find a deeper purpose that's actually a key to being a warrior is what's your purpose right 
Because if you have a purpose and if you have a why that's stronger than anything that could happen to you, whether it's death, divorce, depression, devastation, economic devastation, <laughs> mm -hmm. if your why and your purpose is so foundationally strong, nothing can shake that. Right. By a car, chronic disease, like you, you still have a voice and you still have a purpose and we all have a phone. We all have access to millions of people if we want that. Or you have access to calling your friend or your brother or your sister or whoever. You have an access to have a voice and to have a purpose. And if your purpose, what I've found, if your purpose is outside of yourself, hmm. then that quickly goes from victim to warrior. Mm. As a victim, our purpose is ourselves. Our right. purpose is to make ourselves feel safe, make yeah. ourselves feel small. Why me? Why me? Warrior, your purpose is to help someone else, mm -hmm. to save someone else, to protect someone else. And in turn, you are strong and you're powerful and you are all mm -hmm. these things, but you're doing it for someone else. Mm -hmm. And that mentality shift is huge <laughs> but it takes huge. you out of yourself yeah and brings you to someone else yeah and yeah absolutely i could not agree more and i think for those of you who are listening to this because i know a lot of us struggle with that word purpose too it, it can sometimes feel like oh my gosh yet another thing that i have to figure out but i love that you said your why because i feel in my mind, it's almost easier to access my why. Because I can, in, in one day, I can just easily feel what my why would be. That feels more like it's just more, um, oh my God, I don't know if I'm going to make sense at all right now. But a why is like, I can find a why every single day. And it doesn't necessarily need to be connected to the way that we speak about purpose in this patriarchal world culture maybe that's what it is purpose can have two different meanings i feel like sometimes as women especially we get very caught in oh my god i need to have a purpose i need to go achieve i need to go and do um whereas a purpose can also be what your purpose is in your family today or what your purpose is within yourself um, absolutely purpose doesn't have to be a big gigantic exactly for yep. me on a Tuesday, my purpose is to do the dishes and it's to do it well. Love that. And my purpose yeah. is to do the laundry and yeah. to have my little kids do the laundry with me mm. so that they know that laundry needs to get done. And that's mm. my purpose. And my purpose is to cut up cucumbers yet again for a snack. <laughs> and then darn cucumbers. five minutes later, my purpose is to change my daughter's diaper. And that and so like purpose isn't day. like... I need to find this big thing. No, if you can't do the yeah. small things well, you yeah. won't be able to do the big things. Right. Because that your, your foundation isn't set. Mm -hmm. But we all, I think that's a, a, a huge issue too now is we all have access mm -hmm. to, as I was just saying, we all have access to a million people and you do, but that also can be a hindrance because you think, yeah. oh, I need to do this grandiose thing. Right. And you and I talked about this. Oh, that is such a big trap mm -hmm. to yeah. become super overwhelmed and super anxious because we all feel like, now we have to have this big purpose. Right. And that was my trap this morning where I was like, okay, I need to write down these quotes. I need to do this thing. And I need mm. to have all these things where literally Arlen texted me. He's like, you know, you're good enough, right? Aww. And I was like, no, but I don't feel like I am because I need to have this big <laughs> purpose and I need to blow people's minds. <laughs> oh, and then man. I'm like, That's no, crap. we all but, fall into that. Yeah, my purpose, my purpose today is to talk to you about whatever I've been through yeah. and, and that's it. It might not be mind blowing, but it's my story and it, and it is what it is. And, you know, after I get off this live, I'm taking off my hat, taking off this fancy shirt. And I'm, you know, picking yep. out my little girl again and, and going cutting for cucumbers. They're cutting more <laughs> cucumbers. I mean, hopefully Arlen is cutting cucumbers up there for me right now. <laughs> oh man. Oh, but yeah, so no good. purpose doesn't it doesn't have to be overwhelming. It just right. it really it's again about the mindset. If you can do the dishes well and if you yeah. know that this is just a season, if you're a stay-at-home mom like me and you're just 
you're just doing the day in day out Truman show groundhog day, like just absolute yep. sometimes mindless things. And you mm-hmm. think, I want to be doing this on Instagram. I want to have this purpose. I want to do this thing. Mm-hmm. You will in a different season or you will at moments in time, but continue on your purpose, which is raising a family, which is taking care of yourself. If you're having chronic pain, taking mm-hmm. care of yourself, that's your purpose so that you can become strong again to have maybe a, a broader purpose. I don't think mm-hmm. there's a bigger purpose, but there's like maybe a broader purpose. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's, it's so, so true. Um, and I, I am thinking about what you said. I think we've said it a few times here that how the physicality and the emotionality and mentality, it's all connected. Mm-hmm. Um, we're running out of time a little bit here. I just I wonder what, what do we want to dive into now? But I feel like that is like the next thing. How can we take care of ourselves on all of those levels? Because I know for you, you went from being just in the lowest of your lows into starting to, to, to train and you train your body. And that way you began to train your mind. And like you said before, proving to yourself what you were able to do in the same way that birth proves so much to us and even cold plunging or ice baths, they, they prove something to us um, that we are capable. Um, what are some things would you say that, or let me say this, how important is it to move your body? Of course, we know that it is very, very important. Before stay at home mamas right now that are feeling overwhelmed, what is something that they can do to tap into that so that they then through that can take care of their uh, emotional life and mental life? Just movements, physical movements. Is there anything um, that you could share there? Absolutely. I would say laugh and do jumping jacks. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> laugh, jump up and down with your kids. Literally do a game where you're doing head and shoulders, knees and toes. Put on some crazy music where you're laughing, your kids are giggling, you know, and you're just in that movement, but you're creating or you're in that moment, but you're creating movement. Because for me, mm. I realize when I'm a victim, I'm stagnant. Like yeah. when I when I feel these this this these uh, moments where I'm just like, oh, I'm totally a victim right now. It's when I'm still and it's when I'm dark and it's when I'm like in this thing. And the first thing you can do to break out of that is turn on music, crazy fun music, like some kind of, I don't know, dance, pop, whatever, but some music that, that, that shuts up the voices in your head. So you have another narrative going on. And then just do something totally ridiculous. Spin upside down, do jumping jacks. Um, if you can't do jumping jacks, because you just had a baby a week ago, so I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> do something where you're just, you're moving your arms and you're just being silly and you're being crazy. Yeah. And it's almost, a, it's almost a don't worry, be happy moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like put everything else on the shelf, like put everything else aside for a second but break up that moment and do something with your kids tickle them make them laugh so that you know that laughter is contagious or even don't make them laugh you laugh like if you're nervous or if you're or if you're feeling low or whatever (laughs) you start to laugh hysterically and it's totally fake like I'm fully Fake laughing totally right faking now. It. It's the craziest it's thing. Until you make it. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes other people laugh. And, you, and it will make yeah, your kids laugh. You, you totally would make your kids laugh. But again, if you're asking me, what can a stay-at-home mom do? It's brilliant. Just, just break out of it. Like you see kids yeah. do it a, a million times a day. Yeah. They're bawling hysterically one moment, and then they're laughing the next moment. Yeah. And like these. They don't get stuck in their stories like we do. It's right. fully just like moment to moment to moment. Yeah. So we can do the same thing. You can choose to move, to jump, to dance with your kids. I mean, the dancing with your kids is life changing. Yeah. Just being silly. And the more that you can dance, the more you're like, oh, wow, I'm actually breaking a sweat right now. Right. And your endorphins are going. Blood is pumping. Right. Blood is pumping to your brain, to your heart. And it just fully 
it can change your entire day. And you don't have to have an app. You don't have to download a $30 workout program. You don't have to ha get your mat out. It's like, no, some of us don't have time for that. Some of us just need to shift it now yeah. and then put the kids down for a nap mm. and then cut key humors. I love that. <laughs> and I know as somebody who knows depression and lives with anxiety, I know how hard, like when you're in that moment of feeling stuck and suffocated, that horrible <laughs> feeling, um, it's so hard to make your finger just go push play on that playlist. But I love that you're saying that it's just, like, just get out of it. Don't overthink it. Just do it. It's, it's the, the same, same with the ice with bath. Yeah, I was just going to say that. It's the, we really should be you doing it. You cannot think right about now, it. Angie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's the same thing because you, I never want to go in there. Maybe Never. twice have I felt excited and, you know, oh, I really want to go in and cool off. I never want to go in. And we had a live with Mama Gina and we were talking about pleasure. And she said the same thing because she knows that I do the ice baths. I said, when we feel so stuck that we just don't even want to think about our own pleasure or doing something that feels good. She said, well, Emily, is like your ice bath. You do it anyway. You just yeah. step in. You move into it. And then in that moment of three minutes which an ice bath is or or more or less feels but like you three literally hours go from feeling like i know but you, you start a victim or that that's what it feels like to me i feel like i'm gonna die right now mm -hmm. and then towards the end i step out a warrior i feel mm -hmm. so happy and proud that i did it and same thing when you just push play on that playlist and you dance with your kids you don't want to do it when you start but as soon as you do it you, you go through all the something. things of feeling fake, of feeling shallow, of feeling all these things. But the more you do it, the more practice you have at it. And yeah. you can fake it until you become it. Yeah. So that for me is like practice, practice, practice. You have, I have had so much practice at being a victim that that's just who I was. Yeah. But the more I practiced being a warrior, that's more of who I became. Mm. So it's just all about practice. It's about doing it, even though you're not feeling it. Stop looking for motivation. Stop looking for inspiration. Just do it. Let's Just do it. do it and feel it. And the more you feel it, the more you're going to become it. The, the, so the better you will good. be. Thank you so that. much, Angie. Are we done? Time. We are done. And the oh, thing no. is, like the mean thing is that they actually cut us off. Oh no! I just, I just want to make sure that people know where to find you if they don't follow you yet. You, you're on Instagram and you also have a website. Can you share that with, with us real quick? Yeah, it's Angie Five, A N G I, and the number five dot com. It's also, it's, it's in my bio. It's linked in my bio and my Instagram. Beautiful. And um, you guys can also go to at we are ama and sign up for our emails. You'll get a notification of when this live is live again, but on our website, we keep all of them that we do and let us know um, what your highlights were from this. Let us know what you loved, what you didn't love. We just love to hear from you. And Angie, again, thank you so much for your I'm time. I'm so on honored, Emily. Five hours. I know, me too. We can do it again. Let's do it Let's again. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you to all of you who showed up. Um, have a beautiful Tuesday. We send you all of our love. Mwah! Bye.